so we can hop in here and uh, you can see why I don't put the cross members in yet some of you younger guys can put it all together first so we can start to get a driver position with this seat now you can figure out exactly where you want this um, oh so cool this is like my favorite part when you're finally sitting in it and you got the wheel and you can just imagine what it's going to be like this thing is so low to the ground it's going to be a blast uh, if you've ever driven a mini cooper those things are not very fast but you're like three inches off the ground like your butt is three inches off the ground it, it makes them a blast to drive now i know everybody wants to put 300 400 horsepower in these but that's not the point of it. The point of it is the driving experience. So whatever you can do to make it feel like you're going a million miles an hour, that's what matters. I mean, if you put $10,000 of shocks on this and it just glides across the ground and you don't feel any of the bumps, it's not gonna feel like you're going fast. But this solid axle rigid rear suspension with only 18 horsepower on it, you're gonna giggle like a kid going 20 miles an hour. I've never tried to lose perspective of that. You know, I built the 100 horsepower one, which it's fun, it's fast, but I want that same feeling in something like this without having to go 100 miles an hour to feel it. So, seats in, let's start mocking up this, uh, this steering rack. All right, so here's the setup. We've got our steering wheel. We've got our quick release adapter. We've got our three quarter inch steering support that's adjustable. We've got a uniball steering support, steering shaft support. Now, the only reason I have both of these in here is because there's two U-joints. Usually this one supports this shaft, but since this is all open right here, uh, I, I had nowhere to put it. So if you make one of these rigid, it'll take care of both those universal joints. Uh, there's a better way to do it. Uh, just get the long shaft that holds it in place. I may order that and replace all this. But for now, it's, it's working just fine. All right, so I've got my double D three quarter inch shaft to a double D to double D three quarter inch steering universal joint. Uh, more three quarter inch double D shaft. And then a three quarter inch, uh, it's welded in there, tack welded, to a 36 spline 5 8 U joint for the steering rack. This yeah. is completely able to be disassembled uh, the only two parts that are welded are this part and this part. So, All right, first things first, we need to get the rack set up. These eyelets on the end aren't going to jive well with our tie rod end links. So what I do is I just pull this off. Now this is 3 8 24 thread, and I just happen to have some 3 8 24 socket cap that will thread right into there. Now what I do is I just build the bracket to go on there. So I have a new steering rack end link to hook up with my tie rods. Why do I use prefabbed tie rods? Because they're rebuildable. If this goes bad, I get online, I just buy a replacement. This goes bad, same deal. If I bend this tie rod, I can get an entire replacement. It makes it so nice. So let's get this set up. And there we go, uh, just some simple tools. We went from an eyelet to a super custom steering rack and link. Now, that's what that's about, in case you see it. Now I put a locking nut on here, which makes this length adjustable, which means I can adjust bump steer very easily with this. If I'm getting a ton of bump steer, I just come in and I set an adjustment on here, use my lock nut and set the spacing. All right, here's the setup. I've got my custom end links with my lock nut on it. I, all I did was cut the end off of an inch and a half square tubing. I'm gonna take some seven millimeter bolts. There is 
a, an American size that will fit, but seven millimeters fits a little tighter. I'm gonna put those on. I'm gonna put some lock nuts on there. I'm gonna weld the lock nuts to the plate so that you just bolt it on. We'll put it on there. Now I'm just tacking everything because I still have to do the geometry for the wheel. All right, so we're here. Uh, driver fit up. This is my favorite, favorite part. This is where you figure out exactly how you want to sit. Now, I didn't finish the pedal set because I need to know where the gas and brake are going to go to see if I can run that rack on the back side of the hub. Oh, I love this so much. This is the best part. Look at that. That kind of works out. Now, you got to check your angles with your universal joints, so I'm going to cut the shaft and really hope this works out because I don't think I'll have a lot enough left over to run it on the front side if this doesn't. So the whole idea of this was to get the driver position, which it looks like it's going to be about this. So what we need to work on now is alignment. Since I'm going to put Ackerman in this, I need to get this aligned before I do that. Uh, this needs to be completely straight before I get going. There's several points of adjustment. Uh, primarily, it's the tie rods, and the secondary are these custom steering rack end links I made. These are to adjust bump steer, so we're gonna get the majority of our alignment from the tie rods as it should be. And then, I left this cross member loose. It's not tacked in yet, and we're gonna move this rack forward and back until we get good Ackerman. All right, I hope this view helps with Ackerman. Uh, right now, it's slightly the angle of the camera, but I have a slight toe out on the front end. I run a slight toe out because I like a quick turn in when I'm driving these carts, a quick turn in We'll get the back end loose quick. Uh, gives you more feel on the wheel. Some people like it. I definitely like it. So this is Ackerman. One wheel should be turning slightly more than the other. I set this up so that we could see it. So this has been kicking my butt for the last three hours. Pedals. You go-kart guys have got this down to an art and I am new to it. So this is what I came up with. There you go. You can see the bolt. I've got my front stop. I've got the spring. I drilled and tapped this bottom one to fit an M8 1.25 bolt and just used some round stock on the front and back for pedal stops. Now this clears completely. Um, and I can just weld tabs here for additional pedal stop if I want. All right, for the guys who wanna know the pieces and parts of how I did that, I just took some half inch square. I cut a three eighths hole in one of them. So I cut two of those and I cut two three eighths round bar. Now what comes in the pedal kit is the pedal, shoulder bolt, spring, nut and a throttle stop. I'm not using this. Not that it's bad, just my cart's not set up for it. Take shoulder bolt, go through the round bar, put the spring on the shoulder bolt.
Now I had to open this up just a little bit, this spring, and I drilled and tapped these holes for M8 bolts. So this M8 bolt will fit just right in here. And I've got the top one drilled and tapped for the throttle cable. Now what I did is just stack these for clearance. I'm gonna weld those together. And then one piece of tubing will go on the back. We'll weld it on. And one will be on the front for the throttle stop with just a touch of spring tension in it. And there we go. One pedal. Now you can see this is a whole lot of throw. We're not going to use that much. So I'm probably going to come up with a bolt that faces up this way to act as a throttle stop, adjustable throttle stop, because I don't want to break any throttle cables. <laughs>